I'm Alexis and I am a dance teacher based in Edinburgh. I teach predominantly ballet and Highland to children and to teenagers. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about my experience of teaching um, during the last year and particularly teaching online. Um, so when we first went into lockdown, I initially pre-recorded classes. I wasn't, well I don't think any of us were really expecting where be that it was going to last for quite as long as it did. So I thought the easiest thing to do is to pre-record things and send them out and then people could work on them in their own time, which would be easier to fit around everything else that was happening. Which I think worked quite well at first, however a few parents after a little while got back to me to let me know that actually the children were starting to struggle a wee bit. I think they were finding it harder to motivate themselves when they didn't have that kind of somebody communicating directly to them. So I thought okay that's fine. I've kind of got a wee bit more used to the technology now, let's try some live classes and I kind of sent out some feelers to see who was interested and quite a lot of people did get back to me and say yeah they would be interested in live classes on Zoom, so that's what we went for. Um, I've also been teaching a few classes for a school that I teach for and we teach on Teams, but it's a very similar experience, you'll know if you've been doing any of it yourself, there are quirks to both, <laughs> there are some things that are easier in each package. but. The, kind of, the overall experience is much the same and that's really what I wanted to talk about just now. Um, so for me going in I think I probably went in with quite a set idea of kind of like, keeping things fairly simple in my classes to begin with and get used to how it was going to work, seeing what space the children had, making sure I was doing everything as well as I could and then as I've got a wee bit more practice obviously trying some different things and getting a wee bit more creative um, so what I found for me has been really beneficial, one of the things is I've started going to classes for myself as well online and I think from a point of view of putting yourself in your pupil's position and understanding better how they're managing and how they might be feeling, it's actually been really valuable. Um, it's just given me a little bit of a different insight into maybe how tricky it might be for them to follow things or what I need to do to make things really clear for them. Um, so for example, not overloading them, not giving them too much information and I think especially when pupils are on Zoom um, they can be put on mute and then sometimes we can get a bit carried away, I know I can. If I'm quite into my subject it becomes almost like a little speech and I suddenly realise part way through that maybe I'm not giving them as much time to speak or to feedback as I would have in class. So just, it's given me pause for thought just to stop and think, okay, this is a different medium, I can't just leave my kids on mute and teach at them. You know, we'll go through and I'll explain something to them and then I'll very consciously say, right, come, come to your screen, take yourself off mute, let's have a chat about that. Or again, as I would naturally do in the classroom, but I think it's a bit harder to do when you're online. Don't ask me why is to say to them, right, okay, you know, say I teach a new step and then just sit back and watch them and say, okay, you have a wee try of that in your own time, I'm not going to say anything, let's just have a wee look and see how you're finding it. Um, because again, I found reading their faces and reading their reactions is quite easy in a classroom versus how it is when they're quite little people on my computer screen. So I think I need to give that a little bit more time and just sit and watch and see how they're doing. So yeah, that's definitely something I've found as I've been going on. Um, and equally, going to classes for me, I know, it, you know this is about keeping the kids engaged and motivated, but they can tell if we aren't. So from my point of view as well, for me to go to a class and learn some new steps and learn a new sequence or learn a new whatever, has been really good to keep me motivated and energised and enthusiastic which hopefully then shows when I'm teaching that actually, yeah, I'm really into what I'm doing. Um, and oh, I heard a really nice new piece of music or whatever, so we're going to use that for some choreography today. Um, so yeah, I think don't underestimate putting some effort into your own practice, I think would be the kind of the message I've taken from that. Um, and while we're on the subject, I've, you know, this has been a really good period for getting access to training and access to kind of meetings and things that, you know, I've been to some lectures taking place in the States on a Saturday night, which I would not have been able to fly that far 
um, or afford to go away for the weekend to go to five lectures. But I can do it in my front room now and that's fantastic. So for me, I found a really good opportunity to kind of upskill myself, which I can then again pass on to the kids. You know, here's some new ideas, here's a different way to train this, here's oh, and it's something I hadn't really thought about. And that's brilliant. Um, and connecting with other people as well that are in a similar position and having the opportunity to share ideas. Like, I don't think that can be underestimated how good that is. But, um, yeah, some of the things that I did want to really mention, which I think will not come as a surprise, but it's probably something I hadn't clearly articulated before and really thought about in my class planning. That's not to say I wasn't doing it, but I probably hadn't thought as clearly about it. Um, as some things that I've picked up from kind of mental health and well-being workshops that I've been at, again online. And it's the three points of kind of things to, to consider which I now quite actively consider as I'm preparing a class, which are autonomy, creativity and relationships. And these are kind of key, if you think of like key values to helping mentally, helping to support pupils and anyone, but specifically from a teaching point of view. So when I plan a class now, I am very deliberately thinking, how do I make sure these pupils at some point in this class, how do they feel that they are autonomous? So obviously there are still points where I am teaching you a new step, I am teaching you a move, but then turning it around to them and you're in control of your education and your learning. So what, how do you find that? Have you got questions about it? Is there, you know, is there something that you want to talk about? Um, and further on in class I might say, you know, you've worked really hard on what I've asked you to do, what would you like to work on now? And quite often we'll go around the class and everybody, you know, at a different, either once or twice that class and then somebody else will get a chance next week, we'll decide what dance we're going to work on. And it just gives them a little bit of control back. So I think recently we've all had a lot of control taken away from us. Things that we would do and that we would take for granted have totally changed. So to be able to give that back to pupils and give that kind of feeling of, yeah, I'm in control of my education here, I'm in control of what's happening to me, is really, un really important. Um, and equally, allowing them to be creative. So I've spoken about this already. They're in, on my computer and they're on mute, which I think is quite important when you're playing music because it makes the music behave better. But it's really easy to talk at them or teach at them. And that doesn't really give them much scope for creativity. So again, how do I include that? And I've made a point of sitting and thinking of little projects that we can do across several weeks of classes and little bits and pieces I can get them to do within a class where they're working on their own kind of pieces and we're choosing different bits of music and they're going away and listening to music and coming back next week. Um, and just, yeah, just giving them things to work on and things to think about for themselves. Again, I mean, there's overlap in that, isn't there? Because it is, it's giving them autonomy, but it's allowing them to be creative as well. Um, yeah, and the last of those three is relationships. And again, Zach has a crossover. These things all cross over with each other. But a big part of dancing always for me was seeing people and the friendships that I built. Even when I was kind of younger and I didn't think I was going to do this for a job and I thought I was just going to classes after school for fun. Like the people were a big part of that. And I still have friends who I've been dancing with for years now that I'm really close to and hopefully that's not going to change. And I know a lot of other people that feel the same. So relationships are a massive part of dance, aren't they? And um, for the kids especially to be sitting, looking and listening to me and not really that aware of each other on their computer screens because they're not in a class together anymore. Like they're losing out in terms of relationship. So I need to do something to address that. And it might just be, you know, that moment at the start of class where you come in and you're putting your shoes on and you're talking to the person next to you. You know, how do we recreate that? Well, we make sure when we log in, we spend a couple of minutes having a wee chat first. And um, asking them, so when they're doing their creative pieces or different things, I get them to teach to each other and um, so that I can sit back a little bit and let them talk to each other, let them communicate, let them build those relationships so they're not 
only interacting with me, if that makes sense. And I just think, I know it's not the same as being in a classroom, and it's not going to be, but them having the opportunities to relate to each other still is just so important. And it's the kind of thing that I think if we don't consciously think about it, it can be quite easily missed or overlooked. Because it's really easy, I know I do it sometimes, I get carried away with what I'm teaching, I really like this dance, I really like this step. Um, and the kids are great, and like, I mean, I absolutely love the kids I've been teaching, I've been teaching for years, they're brilliant. But sometimes that means that they will just do what I ask and they won't really question it. And they might not be feeling it, but they'll go along with it anyway because they're being polite. Which, you know, I mean, that sounds lovely as pupils, but also what that means to me is that I really do need to stop and think and make sure because it's not, you know, it's not fair on them for me to be kind of lecturing at them. So I really very, very consciously need to make sure that I'm doing my best for them. Um, which I like to think I'm doing, but it does sometimes mean that I need to stop and think, okay, this might be a step that I love dancing, but how are you feeling about it? Do you enjoy it? Is there something else you want to do? Um, you know, <laughs> just reining in my own enthusiasm, actually. For all that, you know, hopefully they appreciate it. Um, yeah, just to give them a wee chance and make sure that they know they're still the priority, make sure that they get a chance to kind of, to dance for them. Really, I think is what it comes down to. We're not working at the same kind of way as we were. Um, and that's fine. And actually, I think one of the things that's come out of this, certainly for me, and I'm sure for others, is becoming more flexible. You know, nothing has gone to plan this year. Absolutely nothing. Um, and that's okay. And what we've done is we've been resilient and we have bounced back and we've adapted. And it's hard work, but we've managed. And I think that's something we should all be proud of. And that's something that I'm trying to impart when I'm teaching as well. It's actually, yeah, it's hard work, but you're doing brilliantly. Um, so yeah, honestly, that feels like a fair summary of what I've been working on um, and quite a nice place to leave it. So if anybody does have any questions or want to get in touch, please do feel free. I am always happy to sit and chat and go through different dance and things, always. Um, but yeah, if there's anything at all that I can help with, please do get in touch. I hope I've said something that's been interesting or useful or, you know, something that you felt as I've meant it. And yeah, I hope that we can get back to dancing in person soon and I'll be able to meet some people um, face to face. But thank you.